Stadium in Tampa, Florida. This is the NFL on EA Sports. in the country weather-wise this time of year than this one right here, Tampa, Florida, and beautiful Raymond James Stadium. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. the punter Bradley Pinion on to get us started and off we go from Tampa and here's Lewis and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 the Saints take over first and 10 now we see quarterback Drew Brees in his New Orleans offense set to go on attack here for the first time when you think of accuracy you might as well think of Drew Brees because he owns five of the six best completion percentages in a single season in NFL history and it feels like he's done them all in five of the last six seasons. Like Tom Brady, he thinks he can go until he's at least 45, loves playing the game, takes great care of his body, and despite missing five games of the thumb injury last year, showed his toughness and came back and threw 27 touchdown passes against just four interceptions. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Opening quarter, his opening carry of the game. And I think they'll give it to him a few more times, as they should. You're exactly right about that. With that type of a run, you want to repeat it many times until they show signs of stopping it. I think he did his visualization exercises before this one, and they're paying off. Catches left side. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Two yards, good enough for a first. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. the quarterback keep it here on first and 10 and little room to maneuver there he gets it down to about the 39 he was Shaquille Barrett in on the tackle it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way they stacked that one up really well but give him credit instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play which might have turned into a big loss Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. 
William Goldstein. This would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. But well, that doesn't start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Not now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. To the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Now Breeze throwing the out route incomplete. It's Smith. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. That next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. On fourth Will down, Lutz, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the right hash, this from 53. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. Saints, three. Buccaneers, nothing. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. Will following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. On the return, it's Kenyon Barner. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here come the Buccaneers, led by their new quarterback for 2020. Of course, you know the story by now. His 21st season, first in Tampa, it's Tom Brady. I'm sure a lot of past teammates for Tom Brady in New England get tired of hearing the phrase, what would Tom Brady do if he's surrounded by weapons? That's exactly what he's got in Tampa Bay. He's got big time receivers on the perimeter. You add in Rob Gronkowski at tight end. This may be the best looking offense that he's ever played with. And now the question is, how quickly will he mesh with those new teammates and take command of his new offense? Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 27. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. A pass underneath for Fournette. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make this a second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Looking to throw again on second down. Brady. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And it's third and short. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. Yards to go. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Great first drive defensively. Third and short, able to stop the run. And what it does is it gives not just confidence to your defensive players, it gives an overall feeling of, okay, we've established things here early. We can carry this throughout the game. Effect, effect. I'm not sat down with my account. He said I got good news. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away.
call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Complete. 33 yards that time. I know we love our jobs and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Number 41. Give him a yard down to the 43. He was brought down. Sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the gun, it's Breeze. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Johnson, the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. You and I watched film yesterday, and he told me to watch his feet. For whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incomplete. Well, we've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Heck of a start, a 30-yard pickup on their first play from scrimmage. First one, I have to say, they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school, and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. From midfield, here's Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. But it looks like a Buccaneer was able to corral it. Yes, the Bucs have it. Tampa Bay keeps the possession. Able to fall on it, but look where they recovered it. That's a big loss. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. So they keep the football, but now face second and long. From the gun, it's Brady. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. Third down here. 
A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And the throw there gonna be incomplete. Intended for Antonio Brown, incomplete. Janoris Every Brady. offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Begin on the ground with Kamara. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. He was just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And he finds Cook. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Ten yards, good for a Saints first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run, this is Kamara. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Shotgun now for Breeze. And Ty Montgomery has it complete. The pass. They'll get three out of the dump off there, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Throwing now is Breeze. This is Johnson, he's got it. Breeze. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It's a game first catch for him on the afternoon and it results in a first down. That's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. On first down, Breeze. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. This duo locked in, 14 yards there, and a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit, 
Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to his running back, Alvin Kamara. And that'll bring up second down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So line of scrimmage still to 39 on second and 10. Again, it's Breeze. And the catch made, this is Emmanuel Breeze. Sanders. Complete. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Give them three yards. Yards and a fresh a set of downs. Great. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. now on first down over the middle to Smith and he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5 23 yards on the play well, remember they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind and this time they get it to him the more conventional way and it's much more successful as well A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. They've got it first and goal at the six. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. Not a whole lot there after the penalty, but remember, it was first and five, not first and ten. So now they can keep grinding out first downs, and good things can happen for them. Just second and short coming up. Second and goal from the one. Now Breeze. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time lucky that the arm is going forward. Incomplete pass. They'll run it with Kamara, and he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. A one-yard touchdown run from Alvin Kamara, and the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Will Lotz on for the point after. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. 
That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. First and 10 at their own 20. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do? to pick up a first down and change our momentum. And Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at their own 23. And he'll begin the drive with a give to Jones. And nice yardage right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. DeMario, DeMario Davis makes the tackle. He led the Saints in that category in 2019. Six at the 26-yard line. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Yeah. Buccaneers nothing. Six yards left on second down. Shotgun now for Brady. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun. Brady, and he's got an open man, it's Gronkowski, and he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line, that's a gain of nearly 40 yards on third and medium to pick up the first. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life, maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. Changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Brady going to fake the give to Jones and set up the throw. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. But the Brady Gronk connection, certainly something to watch here with the Bucs in 2020. Of Tom Brady's 541 touchdown passes coming into 2020, Gronk 78 were the most of any receiver. First time into the red zone for the Buccaneers. It's first and 10 from the 12. Again, it's Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. And the Buccaneers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Well, they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. The carry here for the big tight end. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. As the offense went on the field to start their last drive, you know they discussed it in the huddle. Hey, if we put one in the end zone here, we've put ourselves in a position to start making a comeback. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10 7 now. That time, a six play drive. And it's culminated by a two yard touchdown run. 
up past the 20 to the 22 yard line. The Saints take over first and 10 at their own 22 yard line. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 22. And he'll start with a give to Kamara. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. To throw is Breeze. Over the middle complete, it's Smith. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Breeze now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Traquan Smith, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. And that one off the mark behind him. Incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. to throw, it's Breeze. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get it out Breeze near the 40 to the 39. Five yards, now it's third and five. five yards when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. That was just a good example of taking what the defense gave him. No one opened downfield, knew where his safety valve was, swung it out to him. He gets upfield and picks up the first down. Well done all the way around. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Breeze to throw again. His throw incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now, Breeze again. 
Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And here comes Rob Gronkowski and company. And we peek at some of his work from this game where he's nearing 100 yards. And haven't we gotten pretty close in this game nowadays in the NFL to almost taking labels off of the tight end position? These guys now can be the number one option in an offense, and that never used to be the case. So now how do you even match up with them? Cornerback, safety, linebacker, all three will have deficiencies against the best tight ends in the game. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Well, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. From the 25 on second down, Brady. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Throwing his Brady on third down. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Quan Alexander gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 45. He'll set up to throw, and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Alvin Kamara hit the NFL with a bang, had double-digit touchdowns in his first two seasons. Now, production fell off a little bit last year. Just six times did he find the end zone, but his ability to run it and catch it out of the backfield makes it hard to cover. Look for a bounce-back season in 2020.
staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. William, William Golston in on the stop. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. He can run for it, and he will. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive alive. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now this time, Breeze will throw. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. From the gun, it's Breeze. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Smith. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Buck 16. 17 yards. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Good, strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. First carry for a Central Florida alum, Latavius Murray. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. They give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got him, it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. That's Alvin Kamara with a grab from Drew Breeze. And the Saints now add six to their lead. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide's a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Blunts to try to add the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown.
We'll After the touchdown, let's to kick it off. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Bucks take over first and 10. At their own. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 23. And he'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive. And he'll get this one up to the 26. A gain of three, second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second and seven, Brady. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. A rare pick six thrown by Tom Brady. He'd thrown only 14 regular season pick sixes in his career coming into this season. A couple others in the playoffs, the one to Robert Alford in Super Bowl 51. And you might remember the Titans' Logan Ryan doing it late in the wild card round loss a season ago. Alonso looked to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Will Lutz to kick off. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They're gonna need to get up and set in a hurry. To throw again on second down. Brady. A pass underneath for Fournette. Give him six on the play. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big. But in the end, give some credit to the defense. Finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Fighting through pressure. He gets it to Brown. Good play. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First 
first and ten here. And, you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. That throw by Brady incomplete. They were trying to go to Brown once again, but it's going to be second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady back to Brown, this time complete. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And this is taken in at the five. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Antonio Brown, 36 yards. And the Bucs are able to close the gap just a bit. Well, that touchdown certainly helps, but they've got to go ahead and convert, get to the half, and figure out how to keep chopping down this lead in a second, don't they? Yeah, they still need to regroup, and they still need to end the second quarter strong. A little bit of time left. Right. Suck up for the extra point. It's up and good, so they claw back into it, 24-14 now. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And here's Lewis. He's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. First and ten, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Shotgun now for Breeze. Smith catches left side. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Breeze. Left side here to Sanders. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. Breeze. Call it no game there on the first down play. That's a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion,
completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. On the crossing route, complete. It's Sanders. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. The kick by Lutz is good. is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. Saints 27, Buccaneers 14. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. Will Lutz. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. Now it's Barner. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Alvin Kamara who led the way in that first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So this a two-possession ball game as we get back underway, set for the third quarter. Now this will make it into the end zone. And we will start at the 25 as Barner will not return it. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. On first down, Brady. It's caught by Mike Evans. And they get him down the mountain before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. From the gun, it's Brady. And he'll get that to Fournette, complete. 
And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well and get a few stops. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Shotgun now for Brady. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Marcus Davenport. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Brady. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. A gain there of 21 yards. First down. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch, too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it, though, if there's a chance for him to get the football, even though he was covered well, he somehow finds a way to get it. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Into the red zone, it's Brady. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. And that, not a sight you want to see. Leonard Fournette very slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. the eight, it's second and four. Here we go, D, get off the field. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. We just saw another example of really good defensive football, which has led to the cushion that they have in this game. Got to him once again, knocked him on the ground, forced an incompletion. Yeah, they've set the tone. It's one thing to set the tone, another to come in here on the road and set the tone. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Brady to throw again. This will be caught at about the six. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Now Brady again. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Ryan suck up on for the field goal. A 30-yard attempt. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. Good. And that gets him back within 10. The score is Saints 27, Buccaneers 17. So a decent.
decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you're that clapping on the sidelines, right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. Bradley, the punter pinion now to kick this one away. And here's Lewis. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. First and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is make sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. And here's a throw that's taken in by the tight end, Cook. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They get this to Smith on the jet sweep. And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. That is a wide out. When you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Here's Breeze to throw. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. And that Shaq Barrett, last year's sack leader, gets in there to register another one. So they come out of the locker room trailing, but plays like that, they won't be trailing much longer. Defense really starting out well this second half. Yeah, they knew they had to jumpstart things a little bit. They really struggled in the first half trying to slow them down, but now they had a plan, made that adjustment that we always talk about, and it worked very well on that play. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 22. Off of play action, he'll look to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. To throw again. Brady into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. 
So a dangerous pass over the middle into zone coverage, and it bit him hard. And what's really difficult when you throw it in that direction and versus that zone, that means the linebackers have gotten to their spot, gotten their heads back around, and they can see the quarterback and everything in front of them. And they took big advantage of it, went the other direction, excellent blocking, and picked up a touchdown. Blunts to try to add the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This taken in about four yards deep. And we will start at the 25 as Barner will not return it. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now Brady to try again after the pick six. That's complete to his running back, Evans. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. When Mike Evans sees man coverage, I don't think he's the only guy who gets excited. I guarantee the guy throwing the ball does because guess what? He's got a lot of options about where to place it because of Mike Evans' size and frame. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Operating from the gun, Brady. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. Brady's pass. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. That time a slant, Brady in general on those quick hitters, he just releases the ball so fast. He does, and he's so accurate, but most of the time, he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read. Finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And he's going to get it down to the 14-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This is caught, Gronkowski. And the Bucs are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. 
They'll try and run it in with Jones. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Bucs are able to cut into that deficit. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, he used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Extra point try now for Sacco. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's Ronald Jones that polishes it off with a touchdown run. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And here's Lewis. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. First and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. This now a 10-point game, so things tightening a little bit after that last score. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their own 27. He'll look to throw right away. That'll be complete to Cook. Breeze pass. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. On second down, Kamara. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are. Stay with who you know and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Like how they started the third quarter here. They forced a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Breeze. Now Breeze lost the football. But fortunately, the Saints were able to hold on to it, so they will indeed keep possession. Hold on the play. Recovered by the... That ball popped free. We could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on him. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And brought in by the tight end, Cook. 
And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. It's so tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Seven yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, why? Well, I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. Not much there, maybe a couple up to the 35. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They get seven there, but it brings up four. four then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried the crossing route against it, and it worked for a completion. But you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them, no pickup. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side, you know? And in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. That's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing <laughs> if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. A throw left side to start to drive is complete. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. The second and 10 now as we roll along in the third quarter from Tampa. Shotgun now for Breeze. It's caught on the right side at Smith. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. First down, Saints.
Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he's going to be stopped here for no gain. And that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter of play. Back now in Tampa. It's the Saints. They'll be looking to expand their lead here. They've got the football as we start the fourth. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. To throw is Breeze. Pitch and catch here to Cook. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Here's Breeze, and he finds Cook, and able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. From the gun, it's Breeze. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. Intended for Traquan. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Now Breeze on third down. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. Levante David making his presence felt in the backfield. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will pin him back deep. That's going to kick out of bounds right at about the seven-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? But that definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Back now comes Tampa Bay. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. You call it a gain of five, and it'll be a second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Shotgun now for Brady. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. 
Perfect. 11 yards there, first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance, not with him. We've seen it too many times. Throwing on first down is Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The pro bowler, Chris Godwin, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, Brady. And he'll get that to Fournette, complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 25 yards there on the catch and run. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Forget height and catch radius. You run the fade really well, run down the defender, kind of take him a little bit towards the middle of the field, and then fade to the sideline and give your quarterback some space. It can be executed that well, just as we saw. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now Brady again, looking for Godwin and he's got him complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34 yard line. Nine yards to pick up there and it's a first down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Again, it's Brady. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Able to get seven on that first down pass play, second and three. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And down inside the 15 he goes. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he stopped immediately there. Marvel call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Right. The free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle? Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. They'll run it with Jones. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. Back to
back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Bucks on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and ten. From the gun, it's Brady. Oh, no, he lost the football. Drew Brees sacked. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. So on fourth down, Ryan's out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. And Suckup will put this one right through. And this is back down to a seven-point game. Saints 34, Buccaneers 27. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Pinion now to kick this one away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. 28-yard line. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. to throw. Looking sideline, incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice, get rid of it, live to fight another down. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And not much, maybe a yard up to the 29. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down, then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Now Breeze. And that is incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. First and 10. 
At the Here comes the Tampa Bay line. offense now heading back out onto the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. And maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. On first and ten, here's Brady. And that's going to be intercepted. Malcolm Jenkins, the pro bowler. Intercepted by the Saints. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in December. Giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. A throw left side to start out, that's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Johnson. A gain of five brings up second and five at the 37-yard line. He's going to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. And he'll force the incompletion. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. He shakes him off. And that is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. 34, Buccaneers, 27. see Tom Brady and the Bucs set to take over. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I mean, we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. This has been all that we'd hoped for. Two of the game's all-time great QBs slugging it out in a one-score game here in the second half. First and ten. And now this pass brought in by Brown. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. A quick pass here to Godwin. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. On first down, Brady quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. 
They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Gronkowski. A gain of four. It's now second and six at the 38-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. You've got to get out of bounds. You absolutely have to get out of bounds. Right idea, working the perimeter, but the clock rolling. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Not good, they didn't move the football an inch, and precious time ticking off the clock. Second and ten at the 30-yard line. Brady's saying let's go as he'll hustle him to the line. He's back to throw. It's complete to Brown, right side. Brady's pass. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And remember, field goal does him no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. To throw is Brady. A pass underneath for Fournette. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Another. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Brady. This will be caught just inside the 10. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Line of scrimmage, the nine. Second and about a yard. They'll look to throw. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And the Buccaneers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. A looming decision to make on the conversion, down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. And this ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. for the extra point. And we may very well be headed to overtime. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play.
Bradley. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. And this carries into the end zone. And with time of factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. The New Orleans offense set to take over. They, of course, tie game, would like to avoid overtime if they could. And a lot of people would go ahead and play it safe here and get to overtime and try and win it there. But you know, sitting up here in the booth, take some gambles. I say let's go for this thing, try and push it, and maybe catch the defense back on their heels a bit. If they do that. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 28-yard line. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kicks away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. At their own 23-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. Give the tackle that time to Jordan Whitehead. A short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. Now Breeze finding Kamara. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. And this will wind up a Saints first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Jordan Whitehead on the tackle. A gain of 11. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. And sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Breeze now on first down. That'll be complete to Cook. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. From midfield, here's Breeze. Sanders has it over the middle. 
And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Here we go. to the ground. It's Kamara. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And all the way down to the 25-yard line. 17 there and a New Orleans first down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. First and 10, here's Breeze. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Complete. 10 more there and another first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations. That's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. A gain of six there on first. He's padding his already great numbers here in overtime. More importantly, though, moving his guys downfield. And I think that's exactly what's going through his head right now. Moving them downfield, putting them in a position to win the game. The stats, that's for the fantasy guys. I know they're enjoying that show. They'll bring out four receivers, three of them being sent to the left, one to the right, second and four. From the gun, it's Breeze. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties, and he's able to knock that one away. It's third and four. Big play here, trying to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. You can't fault the offensive line for that incompletion at all. He had all day to throw the football. Their alarm clocks went off early today, didn't they? Absolutely, they did. He was surveying, surveying, finally let it go, but incomplete. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This to at least get him a lead here in overtime. And Lutz puts this one through. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. 37. Buccaneers, 34. They're able to put three on the board here on the opening drive of OT and now up to their defense to try and see if they can hold this one. I like how you framed it up because obviously this game is not over, right? They go down and kick a field goal, then we head to sudden death. But if the defense can hold, take the ball away, turn it over on downs, this game's over. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Taken about seven yards deep. And we will start at the 25 as Barner will not return it. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. 
get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. First throw of overtime for Brady. And this will be incomplete. Brady, physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Incomplete. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there the moment the ball gets to the receiver, and he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again, Brady. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 15 yards on the play, first down. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. Throwing on first down is Brady. This into the hands of his running back, Ronald Jones. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Three yards the gain there, second down. So a little chunk there on first as they try to chip away down three in overtime. I like your description. Chip away, down three. You don't have to get it all in one big play, although obviously that would be nice. But there's no need to have that type of risk associated with it. Run your offense, get first downs, get yourself in a position where you know you're going to at least get three. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Cameron Jordan, what a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> So Brady and the Bucks need to work a little magic third and long after that last sack. Shotgun now for Brady. And he'll get that to Fournette complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. And here's your ball game, down three in overtime, but they're going for this thing on fourth down. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. He's going deep for Brown. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. The Bucks try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Saints are going to get it back and in great shape. Now that's just simply good coaching and excellent technique on that play. You know why? Because wow. everyone wants to rush the passer when they want to throw the football, but you're not always going to get there. So what are you taught to do? When the ball's finally thrown, get your hands up in the passing lanes, and they batted that one away. No, 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 no. Today's final We thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint in overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goal is from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, <laughs> but he pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Tampa.